Its scientific name is Ursa Arctos horribilis, horrible bear. At a maximum of 1,000 pounds and nine feet tall, the grizzly is a formidable and imposing predator. Perhaps the, the biggest myth is that they are uh, fearsome killers, uh, exaggerating the danger of any single encounter with them. I've spent in excess of 5,000 hours on foot in the field working with grizzly bears. And people who haven't spent time around grizzly bears tend to exaggerate the danger because occasionally they do seriously injure people. But so do automobiles, so do helicopters, so do all sorts of things. But because I think the grizzly bear is an animal and such a large and massive animal, the, the focus on, on the danger gets blown out of, uh, out of all proportion to the reality. That is the biggest myth about grizzly bears. We've all heard stories about people and bear encounters, and chances are if you've made a day trip in a K country, there's always the possibility that you'll see one yourself. But most encounters are with Alberta's smaller black bear, and not the larger and rare grizzly. Generally speaking, there's about 50 times as many black bears in Alberta as there are grizzly bears. The grizzly bear's range in Alberta has been reduced dramatically in the last 150 years. 150 years ago, there were perhaps at least 6,000 grizzly bears in Alberta. The most recent count is around 750. Today, grizzlies have been pushed into isolated pockets, but that wasn't always the case. At one time, grizzly bears ranged widely throughout most of the province of Alberta, including on the prairies. There was a thousands and thousands of year long relationship between bison and grizzly bears. And bison provided some of the highest quality food that a bear could ever uh, dream of having. At one time, grizzly bears were, I wouldn't say common on the prairie, but they, you, could, you could see a fair number. And evidence to that was around 1880, Isaac Cowie, who was a trader for the Hudson Bay Company, recorded a half kill of grizzly bears being traded. That half kill was 750 grizzly bears right from the Cypress Hills in Alberta. So there were a lot of bears out there, and uh, as humans have, have moved into the landscape, well, there's been less and less space and less and less uh, opportunity for grizzly bears to survive. Pressure on the grizzly bear started 350 years ago and has not let up since. That's because grizzly bears die for all sorts of diverse reasons, but they seldom die natural deaths unless they're very, very young. There's just a plethora of ways that a grizzly bear can get into trouble. Recently, we've had a special problem with grizzly bear mortality on the railway tracks in Banff National Park. And uh, grizzly bears, for one reason or another, either being attracted to the tracks for a long while, grain was a major attractant. Supposedly now, there's real efforts being made to improve this situation. It's taken a long time to, uh, to respond to this what is now the number one source of grizzly bear mortality in Banff National Park, collisions with railways. But the CPR seems to be headed in the right direction. They've committed significant funds toward research, and they've committed significant effort toward uh, trying to make the grain cars not leak. So it's a big problem, and finally we have hope that there's gonna be some serious efforts made in addressing it. Alberta is rich in energy resources and relies heavily on the jobs it creates. Oil and gas is a fact of life in this province. The, the challenge is not the extraction of the oil and gas from the wellhead, but however much traffic goes into exploration, maintenance of wellhead sites, road systems, because if there is a single predictor of how well grizzly bears do. It's the amount of human activity in the area. 
Among land use issues between humans and grizzlies, ranching is another that has deep impact on the species. On rare occasions, a grizzly can develop the bad habit of preying on livestock. Such animals have to be put down. But uh, ranching also contributes tremendously to the conservation of grizzly bears because it keeps private lands in fairly extensive as opposed to intensive use. And of course, grizzly bears have a much better chance with an environmentally conscientious rancher than they do with a housing development. Human recreation is yet another uh, challenge that, uh, that grizzly bears face. Uh, hiking itself is certainly not totally benign as it reaches higher use levels. It starts to displace grizzly bears from areas where they're, where they're finding resources and yet they're reluctant to take on the, uh, the numbers of, of the presence of larger numbers of people. The single biggest threat for most species is the inability to connect with other populations. The same holds true for grizzly bears. So we do have to worry about connectivity of populations because that's what maintains genetic diversity and even more important, when a given population unit starts to decline in size, it can be rehabilitated by the input of individuals from other populations, but those populations have to be connected. So we have, we have a couple of issues. One are the number of bears and then the connectivity of the larger population in order to address both genetic and uh, population decline issues. It's not so much disease that you get in small and isolated populations, but a phenomenon that biologists call genetic drift, where you can get the accumulation of, of deleterious, of bad, uh, bad genes, literally. It's just like human beings interbreeding. We don't marry first cousins and have offspring. The same thing happens in small populations of, uh, of grizzly bears. And this is why larger uh, connected populations are so effective for conservation of species. The grizzly's many external challenges are compounded by a biological one. They have one of the lowest reproductive rates of any species in North America. We found in our study of reproductive rates in Banff National Park that the grizzly bears weren't reproducing till they were almost five years old. And then they weren't successfully reproducing typically until they were about eight years old. And then they were having four and a half years in between litters. So if you kill too many grizzly bears, they're not like deer or rabbits or coyotes. They don't bounce right back. They are slow to recover their population numbers. So biologically, we have some challenges in maintaining grizzly bear populations. Sadly, there are many Albertans who don't want to save the grizzly. They don't see its value. But the bear is part of an ecosystem, and that ecosystem is part of the core of Alberta. Uh, that's the, the greatest contribution that grizzly bears have to make is to connect us with, uh, with some of the wildest nature we have in Alberta. The, uh, the issue of whether it's good enough just to have grizzly bears uh, in national parks, we probably don't have large enough national parks with grizzly bear populations in Alberta to maintain the species for the long-term time frame. Uh, the ethical question is, do we have the right to remove grizzly bears from everywhere we want? Do we want Alberta outside of national parks to be declared a grizzly bear free zone? And this is what happened. This is what happened in California. In, in the United States, the grizzly bear has about 2% of its former range. And we may be on a path toward doing that in Alberta. Um, we need to develop Alberta for sure, no question but we need to do it in a manner that, uh, that leaves behind some of the fabric that was here when our forefathers arrived.